Harris here from uh, SimpleNursing.com. So uh, today in this video we're going to be talking about MIs and really basic, easy to understand MIs and therapeutic modalities because MIs in the heart are really just traffic accidents that are blocking the highways of your heart, the coronary arteries, that really feed oxygen. So if there's a traffic accident, nothing, uh, no uh, cars can get through, cars being your red blood cells to oxygenate the heart. So let's go into it and let me explain the therapeutic modalities of the, act, the traffic accident cleanup, pretty much your MI. So let's see here. Here's your heart. That's a nice heart. If I can find my markers here. There we go. So we know that the heart has coronary arteries. Coronary arteries that feed the heart with oxygen, yeah? Now, these coronary arteries uh, are pretty much just the highways, the freeways of the heart that feed the heart with oxygen. And we know that oxygen needs to be in the body for your body to sustain life. Because if you hold your breath, you know, for six minutes, um, your body dies. And that's why we know that people who drown um, and aren't able to get oxygen, turn purple or blue, cyanotic, and the tissue just dies. So that's pretty much what's happening with an MI. So let's get into it here. So if we think of your heart, the blood vessels, the coronary arteries of the heart, really as just a traffic highway. And this highway, let me uh, bring it in real quick. And these highways are pretty much being occluded. Uh, there's pretty much a traffic accident on the highways of the heart. And we all know that traffic accidents cause a lot of backup, cause a lot of congestion, and are really a damper on your day when you're trying to get somewhere. It takes a lot longer, right? So if you're on the 405 uh, down in Southern California, and there's a lane that's closed, or two lanes that are closed, and are not letting anything uh, pass, we know that these, this traffic has to go around, and now there's only two lanes that are open. Now this is going to cause a lot more congestion and not letting a lot of cars go through. This is what happens when your heart or your coronary arteries have a clot in them. And we can call this basically a clot. So what are the things that medical personnel do to help? So let's see here. For something called stable angina, Stable angina is just pain on the heart, right? Pain during exercise. Because we know that when the sympathetic nervous system kicks in, it causes vasoconstriction, constricting those blood vessels um, and not letting a lot of oxygen through and really using up a lot of oxygen. So when you stop the exercise, the pain is relieved because you have oxygen now going to the apex of the heart and a lot of the pressure is relieved off the heart and there's less oxygen consumption with the exercise. So with unstable angina, there might be a block in the heart causing not a lot of oxygen to get to the apex portion of the heart. So what do we do as medical personnel? One of the things we try to do first is give nitro for unstable angina. And what does nitro do? All nitro does, really, is add more lanes to the freeway. It vasodilates the blood vessels. So instead of having um, only you know a few lanes open, we're gonna open more lanes to the freeway and cause more oxygen to go down to the apex portion of the heart, causing better perfusion. That's what nitrogen does. Uh, then we give aspirin, 325, 325 milligrams for a person with unstable angina. Now, why do we give aspirin? Aspirin, uh, basically a um, antiplatelet, helps the cars, if we can say, the blood vessels, to go around more easily around the clot or whatever's obstructing the flow of this uh, oxygen. So, 
we're pretty much putting less cars on the highway, kind of, that are causing less um, obstruction to the already accident that shut down a few uh, lanes in the freeway. The next thing we're doing is giving morphine, morphine to relieve that pain on the heart. And if that doesn't relieve the pain, then more than likely there is a uh, myocardial infarction, basically just meaning there's tissue death in the heart. And what is tissue death? Why do we have tissue death in the heart? That's because there is no O2 going to the tissues. Now, if I put a tourniquet on my finger and were to hold it there for up to uh, more than greater than six minutes and there's no oxygen going to that distal portion of my finger, I have a chance of losing my finger because there's no oxygen. The tissue dies and it can't be regenerated because there's no oxygen. Same thing with the heart. If I'm blocking all the lanes in the freeway here, and I'm unable to get through, and there's no oxygen coming down to the inferior portions of the heart here, then pretty much my heart dies. I have necrosis. And, uh, do I have a picture there? I have a MI. Now I'll show you what this looks like on an EKG and I'll make it really simple for you guys. But before we do that, one of the first things we do for uh, unstable angina is give nitrogen. And remember, nitrogen just adds lanes to the freeway, really expands the freeway. We give aspirin to cause um, the cars in the freeway to speed up a little bit, not to be uh, coagulated by the clips and really go around the obstruction to cause more oxygenation down to the apex of the heart. And we also give oxygen. And why oxygen? Because we want oxygenation to the apex portion of the heart because we don't want necrosis, we don't want death in the heart. Because when there's death in that left ventricle or the uh, apex portion of the heart, um, this necrosis cannot be regenerated and that is what we want to avoid. And one of the last things we do is um, give your body a beta blocker drip or we can give your body or your heart a um, heparin drip. And heparin doesn't necessarily clean up the clot that's formed in your heart, but heparin prevents further accidents in the heart from happening, further lanes being blocked. So it really, again, does basically an exponential um, higher and above what aspirin can do at the time. It's basically an anticoagulant which causes the cars not to be clumped together. Because we already have lanes being closed in the heart. We don't want to cause any more lanes being closed. So we, with the nitro, increase the lanes. We make sure we're bringing down the collision rates in that uh, heart. Hopefully that there's no more collisions in the future. And we're giving oxygen. And that's pretty much what we do with an MI. So right now, I'm going to show you in this next video how it shows up on your EKG and how you know to differentiate low oxygenation from a myocardial infarction.